Hi, my name is Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies and this is an English clout mirror. So it's used for shooting clout where you shoot long distance and it causes, the, it causes you to look through here and that causes you to aim higher so you can lob an arrow at the target at long distance. Now this is made in England. So the person who made this contacted me, I'm going to zoom up nice and close, contacted me and said, would you be interested in buying my clout mirrors? I said, sure. Um, so he sent me 10 of them um, and this is one of them here. So the first off I'm going to say is clout mirrors are made by people in their backyard. Okay, so I have sold them and I shoot clout and I see lots of mirrors fall apart. I have had a mirror fall apart in a tournament. I was, I'm going to guess 30, 40 points ahead. My mirror came out. I then put the mirror back in and the arrow went behind the target 30 meters. My, by the time I had my arrows hitting the, hitting the cloud again, I was 60 points behind. Got some points back, but ended up losing by I think 20 odd points. So, and the thing about selling gear, archery gear, is you cop abuse from customers. Okay, so just let's cop that. So when you make stuff, you're going to cop abuse from customers. And I always say to people, if you can make one better, I'll buy it from you. Right? And they never make one. Right? So I'm going to give the guy 10 out of 10 for building this. Because it, nothing annoys me more than people going, look, this is not good enough. This is crap. And they don't do stuff themselves because there's a lot of work to build one of these. I can't even imagine how he built this. So... All little screws on the side, little aluminium things here, and maybe you know how he does it. It's two little adjusting knobs here. Like even how you get this rod here. So this is a 1032 rod. Try and source the 1032 rod. You can't source it in Adel in in Australia. It's not available. So stuff like this is really, really hard to source. Like the mirrors down the bottom here, one's got a crosshair on it just there, etched in. Like the little bubble there, like all right, so let's sort of start off with discussing this. To me, as soon as I saw this, I thought this is the Jaguar of clout mirrors. This is so polished, it's unbelievable. And if you've got a friend who owns a Jaguar, you know what I'm talking about. You look at it and you go, this thing is beautiful, but you don't want to own it, right? I'm not having to go at the guy who built this because maybe he likes it. We're going to go through the issues to do with it. So, so like I think it looks amazing. Like the finish here is high quality. It's screwed together, and the little bolts are amazing. The spirit level is fantastic. I don't know where he gets this from. The rod here is fantastic. It bolts in, fantastic. I don't know if this is aluminium. I don't know how he's machined it. Really high quality. There's no defect marks on it whatsoever. Top top class, just like a Jaguar. I don't want a Jaguar, by the way. Um, so you've got two mirrors here to adjust. So the reason, the way a clout mirror works and a prism works is they're off angled. So basically to look at an object, you've got to look upwards. If they were parallel, you're looking straight ahead, right? So you've got to have one offset. I think he's added too much complexity in here by, by having two mirrors to adjust. In fact, when I was trying to get this to work, I was like, well, where, which one do I adjust and how much do I adjust each one? And it became kind of hard for me to get it to work. In fact, I gave up. Then one of my staff sort of started adjusting and he got in and goes, oh, here you are. I'm like, okay, right, yep, I can see through it now. So I can look and see something at a, di at a distance and maybe it's just me, but... Actually, today it looks not too bad. Um, so at the shop, I couldn't get this thing to work, right? But it looks, works fine now. It's got the spirit level there. It looks great. Um, so what's the bits I didn't like about it? Now, if you change the mirror on a normal clout, on a normal clout, this is just a normal one. Um, so one turn here is about three meters normally. So one rotation, so one of those little th threads is three meters so I like micro adjustment on a clout mirror now if you got this set these are good screws and it's going to work fine for you but just to get it you're going to be like nudging it and it's going to be moving your arrows a lot maybe that's okay and then you use your sight to get the micro adjustment all right so that may be okay for you 
Now what he's done, you'll see here he's screwed the lenses in place. He screwed them to, I don't know if this is metal or plastic, but he's screwed them in. Now the reason he's clearly done this is so the mirrors don't drop off, which is what happened to me shooting clout, where the mirror drops off and then I lose. So they're bolted in. No other clout mirror I've ever seen bolts in mirrors to the structure, but I understand why he's done it, because that way it's not going to come off. So fantastic, great idea, lots of work, lots of effort, fantastic. Now the mirror pivots using this little bolt here, so basically he's drilled through the side and tapped it or something and got the little bolts either side. Really secure. Things aren't going to fall apart. Love the design. The problem with it, and it tended to vary on each, each one, it creates a slight distortion of the image. So if you're looking at an object in the distance through the mirrors, instead of it being like square, it could be a slightly distorted picture of the thing downrange. So if you're so if you're aiming at the clout, it may not appear to be square or it may just be a little bit wonky, the picture. That's because the mirrors are screwed in, okay? As opposed to just glued or used sil silicon. But the mirrors aren't going to come off. So my summary of, and I said this is like a Jaguar of cars. I think, I'm going to say, I think English people do things to a high degree and it's just an amazing product. However, the basic things I want to get is I want micro adjustment to move up or down. I don't have it on this one, and I'm just going to go to this one. This is a champion one made in Australia. It doesn't have micro adjustment. Um, it's like you've got to bump it up and bump it down. It's a just a good good mirror, but it doesn't have micro adjustment. Now you've got two mirrors here to be adjustable, and I just think you've added way too much complexity, and I don't know the benefits of it. Now there may be a benefit of it, and I don't know what it is. Okay, so I'm not and I'm going to say I'm not a salesperson for this, I'm doing a review on the product. I think the product looks really good. I think this looks good. I think the finish is amazing. I think these little screws, how it all screws in, is really clever. I think it's a very clever product. The problems I have, it doesn't have micro adjustment, and it's got two adjusting mirrors instead of the one adjusting mirror, and I think that's all you need. So my suggestion, take, look, everyone may be shooting these in the UK, right? This, this may be a thing in the UK that everyone shoots. And when I was selling clap mirrors, I sold plenty of clap mirrors into the UK. All right, plenty. So it was a real pain because they sell for 50 bucks each. The postage into the UK was 40 and then they'd complain about this and that. And I'm like, it's a 40, $50 item. And you're complaining and how much work is there in it? All right, so. And a customer today goes, well, it doesn't matter about the price, it's a matter about the product. And actually, I think it really matters on price because if this product is $400, you have different expectation than if the product's $50. If the product's $50, you go, well, it's $50. It's a cost of going out to eat dinner. I'm going to tell you, I went out and ate dinner the other night for $45 and it was rubbish. I couldn't eat it. I was out within five minutes. It was rubbish. Now, if the dinner had been $5, I would have gone, well, fair enough, five bucks, I'm in and out in ten minutes, it tasted awful and made my stomach sick, but it was five bucks, right? So I think price and expectation is everything. My four-wheel drive, I'm going to say one of my four-wheel drives is a $200,000 car, and one's a $45,000 car. The $45,000 car is, is fine, and I'm going to get rid of the expensive one, um, because the repair bills are terrible on it. But, I think price is everything. Now the price on this on this system I think is about 80 Australian dollars. It had to come in from the UK and I'm going to guess there was a cost of maybe $20 per mirror to get them into Australia. So maybe they cost $60. I don't know how he builds this for $60. There's way too much labor and parts in here to build it and he's clearly a very smart guy. So my 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 review I would like micro adjustment, I'd like one of the mirrors fixed, and then I like micro adjustment. The rest of it is really, really good. The screw in lens thing, I'm, I understand why you screw the lenses in because it's the worst when the mirror falls out. Absolutely the worst because you lose. Losing 
is really, really bad. So anyway, overall, it's a really good product. Um, Clout Mirror from England. Um, look, I'm grateful when people send me this stuff and go, look, I've made this, do you want, it? Do you want some? And I think he originally offered to send me one over to refer a review, and I'm like, no, nah, look, I'll just take them. Um, because, you know, I'm sure there'll be a whole bunch of people who want to try this and see how it compares. And again, I'm going to say there's not many people in the world making clout mirrors for clout. So, anyway, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. Thanks for watching.